Yo, it's your boy H. Black, the source, Harry Panera, and welcome back to Five Debates. Now, last week we spoke about top five players for each club. Uh, this week we're doing top five best signings for each club. We're mm. keeping uh, the theme with, you know, Arsenal, Chelsea, and Man United. Today we're joined by Turkish, come on, the one come and on. only. We've got Joey himself. on the podcast again, because he's mm. part of the family now, I can't lie. Mm. And of course, culture cams. Now, guys, top five signings. For all your clubs now, this is probably difficult off camera. We've been speaking about it. So, uh, Very tough. I'm so happy. I'm not the one discussing this because <laughs> I would I would have had a headache. Um, but we're gonna start with Arsenal, and of course, Turkish is representing Arsenal through and through. So take it away, man. What five to one? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, we'll do that. Five to one. Uh, it's, it's it's difficult. I can't lie to you, but five Perez for me. Oh, original mm. goal scoring wide man. Mm. I think he he set the he set the standards for for goals from the wing. Mm. We've seen Ronaldo and Salah take it on leaps and bounds since, but Perez was the guy for that originally. Mm. And when Overmars left, that was pain, you know, because Overmars was speed star. Mm. He was he was cold for us. Yeah. So when he left, I thought it's going to be hard to replace him. And in the end, we got Perez and. He done his thing. Mm. He done his thing. Yeah, you might know about Perez. No, I'm like hero though. Yeah. Perez is one of. I think yeah. he's that. Like, he's that like for you know legends in the Premier League. Yeah. I think he's the most unspoken yeah, legend. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. you don't even hear his name, bro. It's I, crazy. I, do you know, I remember one time, yeah, him and Beckham both scored a similar type of goal, yeah, mm. when they dinked it over the keepers. Oh uh, what? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think mm, it yeah, was yeah. against Aston Villa. Aston Villa. Yeah, Schmeichel in goal. And um, Beckham did it on the right hand side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say, No, this goal was better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the keepers was on their line. Both on their line. He, yeah, he was, yeah, he yeah. was, he was class. so many good goals. You remember his goal against, um, remember the hat trick, the double hat trick game with Pennant, oh, Pennant. him and yeah, Pennant. Yeah, yeah. You remember the, the whip that yeah. he did? Well, and the his one, celebration one is always, yeah. Yeah. Like this. There was always, <laughs> you know, but don't let's say, it's just, he was the original diver of the Premier League, bro. Yeah. Oh, it's original. Perez brought diving into the Premier League. <laughs> well, if, 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 if we diver. talk about he's the original in terms of goal scoring and yeah, Ronaldo yeah. and Salah have taken that on diving, Ronaldo and Salah also took that on board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you talking about? Am I lying? Am I lying? Bro. <laughs> it's, it's their idol, yeah? <laughs> yeah, man, look, Dr. Perez. <laughs> so we go with number five, Robert Perez. Yeah, uh, four. And this one, listen, it's, it's going to sound mad that he's so low down the list considering how mad this transfer was. But when you hear the other names, you'll understand. But Sol Campbell's four for me. Mm. Ooh. Free transfer, Spurs. Mm. You ain't seen nothing like it since. We've had like Tevez go from United to City. We've had Adebayo move clubs here and there. We've had a few players do it, but the impact that Campbell moving to Arsenal had when everyone thought he's going to Inter or Italy, Serie A, mad. Then he comes in, wins a double, invincible. I would have had him the higher rest up. Is history. Mm. I would have had him higher up. It's hard he when you think of the names we've we've got. The, the, there's three the players in particular in that oh, era. Yeah, that, yeah, was, it's course. hard to put him above yeah, those yeah, names. Yeah. I can't even lie. So four, Saul Campbell. Yeah. Mm. What a player. What is he underrated player? as well? Yes. No. Probably. <coughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, do you think people like Van Dijk are easily better than him? No. I think Not it's easily. different eras, man. Not easily, mm. though. He is underrated, though, because when you hear people list out all-time Premier League 11s, mm. he's rarely one of the two mm. centre-backs that people pick. Yeah. I'm not saying you never hear it, but you don't hear it he's out rarely often. mentioned, even. Yeah, for people that. talk about, like, company and stuff before Campbell. I don't think that's right. I, I think, think that's just our, our, our era no, yeah, yeah. of generation yeah, yeah. of who's talking about football nowadays. Yeah, yeah. But when you speak about to the people that are, like, my age or older, mm. they speak Damn. about... So <laughs> That was, good. Oh, that was good. That was good. I love that. <laughs> I love that for you. Um, but yeah, when you speak about Saul Campbell, yeah, and especially when I was watching Arsenal and even Tottenham back then, mm -hmm. he was a player that you saw some of the best players in the world struggle against. Mm -hmm. Like you saw his impact in the Champions League final. Like yeah. that was for me. He's just he's top five centre backs that I've seen in Premier League history for for, for right. true. Right. I, I think in terms of like I don't know your faults. Mm. Like you're strong, you can pass. You're com like imposing figure mm -hmm. in the defense as well, and you and you generally contribute as well. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't a hoofer. He would get the ball and release it to mm -hmm. a midfield player, and so, like that calming presence, but also a very strong defender. So yeah, I, I agree. I think he's for me personally top five. Hundred percent. So for third, Vieira. Ooh. Ooh. Vieira, AC Milan, three point five mil. Like mm -hmm. when you look at what he done. I mean, just off air, we was discussing Roy Keane at United. Mm. That era was typified by Keane versus Vieira. Yeah. Mm. Vieira was an animal in the middle. He'd done every, you just spoke about Campbell doing everything defensively. Vieira did everything in the midfield. He could defend, he could attack, he could bring the ball forward, he could pass through the lines. He'd pop up with a goal here and there. Most complete midfielder, and then the Vaseline on the chest as well. Mm. Or the Vicks, was yeah, it Vicks? Yeah, 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 one of them, one of them, whatever it is. 
got me putting that on my shirt for no reason. Mum was like, are you, are you stupid? <laughs> you, have to, you have to go and wash that. Yeah, I what cleared it, like, iconic. Yeah, Vieira's satin us. Vieira's Can I just ask, just because you guys are here, yeah? We've had this conversation before. Yeah, yeah. Vieira or Yaya Toure? Vieira. But it's not it's not yeah. cut and dry. Yaya's v- cold, but mm. Vieira for me. Because I support Arsenal and that rivalry was mad. Mm. Yaya doesn't have that in the repertoire, that rivalry. That's not nothing against him. Mm. But Vieira and Keane, when you look at the Premier League era, they that is, it, the, that yeah, is yeah. the battle. For right, the back catalogue, for the back catalogue of what they've done, you've got to go Vieira. But Torre for me, because he was just criminally underrated. Mm-hmm. And I, do you know what? Yeah, like I'm not saying Vieira couldn't, because he could. But I feel like you could put Yaya Torre in that Arsenal team, a prime Torre, and he could hang it just as well. Yeah, 100%. Two incredible players though, mm-hmm. man. But yeah, all right. So we've got Vieira number three. Top two, to second Burkham. I'm interested in Burkham. You got Burkham two. Two. Yeah. I thought you were gonna put Burkham one. You know, it's hard to listen. He's we're crazy. gonna move on to one soon, but yeah, yeah. catalyst. Yeah, he is the catalyst. He's the catalyst for even when you look at the league. I think Cantona and Burkham. You know, foreign Cantona, imports. Mm. He is our Cantona. He is, but someone came in that took that level further. We're going to talk about him soon, but we need to give respect to Burkamp first, the Iceman. Only downfall was he didn't travel to away games in the Champions League. Yeah. That, that, that hurt. Someone made jokes about that last week. Yeah, aside, aside, from, yeah, yeah, aside from that, <laughs> aside from that cold, in terms of culture on the ball, mm. yeah, you listen, Camps, you mm. got culture in front of your name. Yeah. Burkamp mm. is the one in mm. the Premier League era. Him and Cantona lead the way in terms of culture, that aura on the ball, mm. the goals they score, the celebrations they have, their touch, their mm. finish, their their just the aura they they possess yeah, on the yeah, pitch. Yeah. They yeah. they was a different level. Mm. Burkamp. My favorite, oh, yeah. my favorite um Ooh, Arsenal You're player missing of all someone. Time. Oh yeah, but we'll talk about it in a sec. Yeah, we'll talk about it in a sec. Yeah, go on, yeah, go on. That's um, my favorite Arsenal player of all time. Burkamp, Burkamp, yeah, yeah, yeah. You love Burkamp, innit? You Bro, my type of players that I love are like the Kakas. Uh, Zidane's goals, yes, Burkamp. Yeah. You make the game in your pace, no matter mm-hmm. how frantic it is. You take the ball out of the air, you calm everyone down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think you, you've, Ian Wright spoken about him, Henri spoken about him, that when they played with him, they felt like they could do anything. Mm-hmm. And I think when you have a player like that in your team, they are the unsung heroes. And I think they don't, they're so selfless with the way they play. It's not mm-hmm. about them scoring, it's about the team. Yeah, and yeah. I think he was a right, right. Right's best years next to Burkamp, Henri's best years next to Burkamp. Mm-hmm. Um, and Elka's best year mm. next to Burkamp, he was the the provider for yeah. all of them, man. There, and then you get the Newcastle goal, and then then players you mentioned. Mm. That's that's my type of. I'd add Berbatov to that list as well. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, them exactly. players that they even they, our, uh, honorable mention a little Raquel, Raquel me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I oh, love watching him play as Guys, well. Guys, I made the game look. They're effort. not blessed with yeah. pace, but yeah. their their vision and their, yeah. their technical ability mad. But number one, come on. Mm. You got you lot know, and it's number one in the league here. We're talking about yeah. it's not just number one for <laughs> Arsenal. It's number one in the leagues. Juventus eleven million. Mm. Henri mm. comes in a failed winger, leaves the league the best player of all time. Mm. I don't really need yeah. to say what happened in between. We all know. Mm. Um, Different, va va vum, into Trust the Oxford him. dictionary mm. now. Yeah, he, yeah. You know, <laughs> so listen, Henri was something else, man. Gave me my best years as an Arsenal fan. Would love him to be around the club now, but listen, I'm enjoying his punditry on CBS as well. Mm-hmm. So, He's a little yeah. bit upset with Kate at the moment. Yeah, I yeah, see that. That, yeah, that, 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 hurt, that pain. We, we know that. We've seen. We've had that pain. We've had that pain. Only two prem titles, though. Mm. Yeah, only two prem titles. <laughs> only two yeah. prem titles still. He, he, he could have he resisted it. Of course he could. And the thing only is, Cam's agrees with me titles. as well. You know yeah. he's the greatest in the Premier well, League. And saying, you're coming here to throw shade at me. <laughs> only two prem titles is kind of crazy, though. It's, it's, it's kind of crazy. It, 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 but, but go. Come on. Yeah, but in Champions League. Yeah, wait. Oh, no, he didn't. He didn't win any else. Joey. Joey. Oh, my. That's a hate maker. Nah, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, he's a hate maker. Nah, well, listen, well. he left and won Champions League. Obviously, Arsenal didn't do it for him, but he left mm. and won the Champions League. And bus, he, des- he bus, deserved bus to win riding. that. He, he deserved riding. to win that. World Cup, Euros, Premier League, nah, Champions League. I the think it's quite career, rare, isn't it, that, that you'll get a player that every fan base, even rival opposition, will go, yeah, he was the best in the league. Yeah. 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 Like, not at that time, in general, yeah. like, throughout the whole Premier League years. Struggle to de- on no place. one can really debate that. Mm. No, he was sick. You can try all you want, but then there's always facts, bro. We was there. We witnessed it. Every yeah. team felt the the full brute force of when Henri was on the pitch, bro. Mm. He's got iconic goals against United. Mm-hmm. The the, the he, touch, the the Roy Carroll goal, yeah. the the no look, the even the celebration, the bro. lean yeah. back knee slide, yeah. North yeah, London derby. Bro. Like right. he's he's just he's devoured every team. So yeah, all right. So that's that's Turkish's top five. Let us know in the comments what you think. If you agree, he, if there's any players you feel he like did, you missed he, out. Sorry, I just came. He did win the league at Old Trafford though. 
Mm. Damn. Then Wait, he can't play that game. I was in Botswana. I didn't they see don't really play that part, game. Part of the team, my bro. Mm. Part of the team. We won the league at Old Trafford. We won the league at Old Trafford, my bro. Right, that was Wilton. Yeah, that was Wilton. Shout out, Shout out. You don't want it at White Hart Lane as well. Yeah, that was an incredible game, though. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'm surprised. I'm surprised that you've left out Ian Wright. That was, from Palace. that was the one tough one to bring in. I mm. can't lie. I was I, over I was flirting yeah, with right. him or Perez for for fifth, but mm. I went with Perez. But listen, big up right goes without yeah. saying he's a legend on and off the pitch. Who's the one player from this modern era that you would put in, like potentially right now from our club, from the from Emirates era? Who would be the closest to get into the what like invincible? Who's the best signing since the best signing in Emirates since era in the Emirates era? Oh the God. <laughs> Man, that's Sa hard. probably Sanchez. If we're being honest, Sanchez in terms of yeah. the quality of player. Fez, um, I'd say yeah. Odegaard. Right, Ramsey, no? one you two finals. S Sanchez at his peak was being compared to Hazard. Hazard at his peak, mm. whereas Odegaard mm. is yet to really. Mm. Crazy, bro. Wow. Shout yeah. out to Ramsey. But anyway, all right, cool. So <laughs> that is Turkish's <laughs> top five. Like I said before, let us know in the comments if you agree, disagree, um, and what players you would add if you don't agree with that. So Joey, yeah, take it away, brother. Fifth spot. I'd go Azpilicueta, signed for Bro. 7 million from Marseille. Mm. And I think realistically, mate, when we signed him, no one could even pronounce his name, let alone know who he was, where he'd come from. Mm. He came in and he gave us over a decade of good service. He won everything there. A lot of people will level at him like right place at right time sort of thing, but he leveled up massively. He was massively versatile for mm -hmm. us. Like yeah. he played at centre back, he played left back, right back, um, ended up helping like young players transition, especially when we had that transfer ban and whatnot. And you look at like the player, obviously Reese has been hampered by injuries, but the player that Reese James will potentially go on to be in, I think he'll have Azpilicueta to thank for a lot because of the guidance that he give him around that time. And do you know what? Like not enough is made, I think, of players that might never give you a nine, but will always give you a seven, 7.5 mm -hmm. every single week. And being that he was there through such a successful time, I think you'd have to put him in as well. Like seven million, the time he was brought in, we were signing players for like 40 odd million and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So seven million for an unknown Azpilicueta, I think he's got to be up there with, you know, where everything that he's won. Um, he He's was jarring. Fifth. He was so jarring. Yeah. Aspie, there was one point where nobody could take on Aspie. Correct? Never. It was like, unbeatable was at one point. And I think what you said as well, him being versatile, he did, I think that's what I think for me was showcased how great he was as a player because to be able to play right back and then sometimes even left back and then centre back and still provide the same level of consistency, I think that is something that's Top unsung player. here. There's a lot of players, I think, in football that are unsung heroes because they don't get their headlines, but mm. they're the ones that allow for everything else to work. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? 100%. I think Cesar was one of those. Yeah, Fourth, I'd go Ashley Cole. Five million plus Galas to Arsenal. And as well, like well, when yeah. I when I was growing up, obviously paying paying paying. Mate, you boys it. were lowballing him though. You only offered him hundred grand a week, you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> Nearly crashed his car. Look at, look, look, look at what's happened to the market now. Because yeah. of clubs like Chelsea and you know the True. red side of Manchester and hey, don't involve us, bro. But Ashley don't Cole, like, us, do you know what? It's very rare, even from a national standpoint, it's very rare that we can, as England, say we had the greatest player in that position of all time. Mm. And look, oh, there's maybe players before my time, but I think the only player you're going to put up there with him is Roberto Carlos. And if you want a left back to do a left back I'm job, it's Ashley Cole. Mm. So to shift out William Gallas and then get, I think it was five million on top, is so good. Like to be mm -hmm. able to get that standard of player who done it for that long. And you ask like, save for the, the prime Ashley Cole years, yeah? That Premier League side with Chelsea, the best player in the league at that time was Cristiano Ronaldo. Mm. Ask him who he hated mm. coming up against, mm. Ashley Cole. Mm. Ashley Cole, like, just ridiculous. I think mm -hmm. you walk into any side, any generation, any era, and it'd still be, you know, yeah. still be on the team sheet every single time. Ashley so Cole. Mm, I think it. Maldini might have a shout for that left back spot, but mm. not over. Marcelo, Marcelo Maldini, Maldini got Roberto shifted Carlos out centre back, left yeah, left back because of yeah. Yapstam. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But, that, but, yeah, Maldini's obviously. I, but I just think, bro, what he's saying is true. I think there's in our modern generation maybe Marcelo is another shout to mm. one of the best because of what he's done and won. But I think Ashley Cole for me 
was everything. Bro. Yeah, I want to sit here and rip him. I can't lie, but I'm struggling to find something to rip him. <laughs> Sorry, we, you know the other thing as well, yeah, is like when we speak about, like he has a little bit of a reputation about him, Cashley Cole, and mm. you know, almost like he'd have a bad attitude. I never see anything in a Chelsea shirt from him, ill-disciplined, anything, mm. you know, like say for example, I'm sorry to use the example, but like Bruno Fernandes as captain of Man United, mm -hmm. you see him throw his arms about and flap about when things don't go his way. Ashley Cole was a class act. Like mm. on the pitch, he was a class act and that's all I'm really bothered about mm. when it suits my argument. Um, <laughs> only, only, only one prem. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you're prem. bringing these runs up. Yeah, just saying. When Ashley Cole joined Chelsea, United started dominating. Mm. Before Ashley Cole, Chelsea went back to back. You know, when you look at England, especially since Bruce in the woods, lads. You know, yeah, I was a bit uncomfortable there, Joey. <laughs> you see, when you look at our era, though, yeah, I love this era, you know, it's, Beckham, it's... Rooney, and Ashley Cole are the greatest English players of of my era. Mm. Beckham, Rooney, Ashley Cole. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Beckham, Rooney. Mm. I don't know about that, but whatever. Okay, who would you put then? Rooney, John Terry, and Skulls. Or Lampard. Yeah. Mm, first? Skulls, John Terry, and Rooney, yeah. Mm. That's what I say. Not for not for England. Oh, for England, actually. When you, England? when you include that into it, yeah. Beckham yeah. Rooney actually called they all showed up for England. No, 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 I can't lie, that's you're not even wrong there. Maybe. You know? mm. Yeah. Maybe. I'd say mm. So you said Beckham, Rooney, Ashley Cole. I'd add Gerard there as well. You know, not for England. Yeah, you know I mean, who Gerard? England. Gerard, bro, wasn't. Ah, oh, you know what? Sometimes Mid. I feel like you don't watch the game properly. Nah, <laughs> Gerard of England. Mid Lampard was better for right. England than, than Gerard. Lampard, yeah. Can I be honest with you? Euro yeah. two thousand four. Lampard yeah. turned up. Gerard's never had a tournament. No, like. but Ger Gerard has. He just was defensive. That's why. That's the thing with with, with Rooney. I mean, England. Yeah, I feel like they didn't play these players to their actual mm. strengths at all. Yeah, they didn't. So you're looking at Gerard and you're like, but. For example, what, what game was it? Was it um, the England 5-1 against Germany? Mm. It was their best player on the pitch. Mm. Like, and that was a that was a time where I think England were playing their best football because everything was just free flowing. And, mm. But anyway, it's, it's debatable. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Joey, up to you, because this yeah. guy's just a troll. So number three, I'm going to go with Peter Cech. Legend. He was bought in for 7 million from Wren. Again, like, realistically, maybe it was because the age I was at, no one really knew Peter Cech. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think many people were going, right, he's the next one in goal. He came into the Premier League debut season. He concedes, what, 14 goals? Mm -hmm. And I get it, yeah? He had Terry and Carvalho in yeah, front of him in a yeah. wicked backline. But to come in and to only concede that amount of goals also, you know... Everyone everyone credits Didier Drogba and I'll take nothing away from Drogba winning the Champions League final for us. Mm -hmm. But Drogba don't have the chance to kick that ball in and win it if Czech hasn't made them two penalty saves. So yeah, Czech in the penalty shootout, not only that, in the match he saves mm -hmm. a penalty. When you look at our most pivotal night as a football club, in my opinion, finally securing that European trophy, Peter Czech, probably our most important player mm. on the pitch that night, made some really important saves. But just throughout the course of his whole Chelsea career, he had a career-threatening injury, came mm. back better with the head guard on, almost. Do you, you know reckon? what I mean? Mm. Like, mate, like, if I went down the park, I'm whatever. Whatever. I've never had a head injury. I'd yeah. take that head guard with me if I was going to go and go. Yeah. And it would, it would elevate my performance massively. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> you've got to have Peter Check up there. Yeah. I, think, I think he was a brilliant Best goalkeeper in Premier League history? For me, I think so. Well, I didn't get to get, get all of... P I didn't get Peter Schmeichel, so I would say... I, I'd probably say so. But, you know, there used to be a thing... You might be a bit too young for this one, you know what I mean? But there, there was... Um, there, was a, there used to be a, a the Sun, the Sun newspaper done something where it was um who's going to be the first person to score against peter check like it was going on for so long and it ended up being luke moore from aston Villa. remember luke moore yeah, yeah I remember from luke aston moore. he was the first person to score against peter check they were like whoever can guess on certain minutes right yeah whoever yeah. can guess the first person was going to win like some prize or something i don't know if anyone ever guessed luke moore but it was that's that's how solid peter check was it's crazy second and do you know what? There's a real, real shout at this man being top. Um, but we get to my top one. You'll see why I've put him there. But second has got to be Frank Lampard. Bought in for 11 million from West Ham. I think it was the season before West Ham got relegated. So it isn't like, listen, that West Ham team that went down was a really good team. And yeah. they went down on 42 points. Yeah. That's unheard of. You get 40, I mean, Chelsea didn't finish much better than 42 points last mm. season. You know what I mean? So you get 42 points in today's era and you're not going down. That West Ham team had some stars. But the key thing, right? And maybe this has been like a bigger deal made out of it because of that interview that resurfaced. Do you remember the fan thing with Harry Redknapp? When yeah, the bloke goes, yeah. I don't see why Lampard's getting all the minutes. He went, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You know, we've got a perfectly good midfielder in Scotty Cannon. Can anyone here tell me who Scotty Cannon even is? Nah. Yeah. I know Scotty Cannon from that. I literally know him <laughs> from that. Um, so I don't even know the fella. Like, and, and, and he was getting compared with him. Lampard always had that thing against him of like favouritism. You know, people were saying he was out of shape and things like that. He came in from West Ham. The season he came in, I get it, they were further down the league, right? But I think he had nine goal involvements. Mate, within a couple of seasons at uh, uh, Chelsea, he's getting 30 plus and he's doing it at a bigger team, which you can get, okay, bigger team, they're winning more games. But a lot of the time it doesn't transition. Players can do it for sort of smaller clubs or clubs lower down the table and they can't come and do it for bigger teams. Lampard just for years and years was so consistent. Just when you thought he had sort of like peaked, I ain't saying he got better, but his longevity in terms of being able to do it for like six seasons mm -hmm. at that at that yeah. top level, season in, season out, class act. He was a captain without being a captain. Um, and yeah, he led Chelsea to their most yeah. successful ever era. Yeah. So you, I think that. Chelsea, I think he's the old greatest ever player. I would have him as number one, personally. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you why, why I've got the man that I've got number mm. one, right? 1996, right? I was two or saying according mm. to Cam I was about 30 then <laughs> um, <but laughs> I, I, was, I, I was very very young yeah um, and we bought in Jim Franco Zola yeah and 4.5 million which is a lot of money at that time mm -hmm. sort of thing and, and a lot of money considering he was about 30 at that time as well so it's a little bit unheard of in a way but Zola set the precedent for us being able to go and attract big names after that. Mm. After he came in, we got Viali, Di Matteo, even like a Graham Lasso came in for big money from mm. Blackburn who had won the yeah, league. Yeah. Um, a lot a lot of class players coming in after Zola, uh, Zola. They followed his suit. And there's this thing, isn't there, that, you know, the trophies only started arriving at Stamford Bridge once Roman Abramovich came. But under, under you know, whatever manager was there at that Rude time Hullet, and Rude, Rude Hullet yeah. and a little bit of Gianluca Vialli player manager mm. type thing. Um, and, and with the guidance of Jim Franco Zola, we had five trophies in five years before mm. Abramovich came. He won a UEFA Cup, a Super Cup, two FA Cups, mm. which he was instrumental in, a League Cup, Community mm. Shield. So I feel like, and this is proper hypothetical, yeah, but... We know that Roman Abramovich brought us the best period of success mm -hmm. in our club's history. And I feel like without that signing of Zola and what it led to, we might not have never had that. Because mm -hmm. one of the things that would have attracted Roman Abramovich to Chelsea is the fact that there wasn't as much work to do as, let's say, a Tottenham mm -hmm. who we looked into before. Tottenham hadn't won anything around that time. Chelsea had had successful uh, sort of periods in European football, had won trophies, had a collective there that had been built up. And I feel like the catalyst for all of that was mm. Zola. And plus as well, like growing up for me, the first sort of seasons that I was going and watching Chelsea, he was just magic in that midfield. So I think that he changed the course of history, that signing. Yeah. Wait a second. Where is Didier Drogba? Joey! Where's Drogba? <laughs> Wait, what? Do you know what, yeah? Do you know, you know when we're looking, when... <laughs> Yo, I thought he was gonna, I thought it was leading up to a drop comment. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I thought you were leading up to drop the is though, Joey! The thing is, Joey's been sparring a lot recently. Yeah. So, <laughs> this could be CTE that he's suffering from. <laughs> no, but do you know what it is, like, Joey! The, 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 the only, he's gonna be getting over Ashley Cole and that, bro. Nah, he'd go in over Azpilicueta, and he should have gone in over Azpilicueta. Yeah, I've yeah, oversighted yeah, him. Yeah, but yeah. I'll tell you what, though, I wouldn't have him in, like, the top three, and the reason being, wow. when we bought him in, 25 million, yeah? Mm. It was it was a couple of seasons later we signed Shevchenko for 35 million. Mm -hmm. Transfer fees were going up and that broke the record yeah. at the time. There hadn't ever been a player for that. So when we bought Drogba in for 25 million, what you got to do is look at it then and go, right, he was bought in for a hefty price yeah. tag. You know what I mean? So when I'm looking at the likes of Ashley Cole, 5 million plus. Okay, Gallagher, you're looking at the shrewd signing. Yeah, okay. If we're going on about Asper Laqueta, mm. 7 million for what he then won. Mm. You know, all those players there that I'm talking about, the reason being is because I think with all of them, I think you've got the element of surprise there mm, in terms mm, of they were bought in and they did say that. So that's the narrative I was going for yeah. there. But if we're going for it like that, I'm going to say, yeah, mm. cool, Strogbert, Strogbert's got Chelsea have had some good ones, you know, Makaleli. Yeah, that would have been one day. Do you know, you know who McElhaney, do you know who Sean was? I think that's a really right. slept on one is Gary Cahill as well. Mm. But he came yeah, but in, you he came in, in January. I think because John Obi-Mikhail. He sat down in a Man United top and done a press conference. Do you know, I didn't mind that. We almost sat around our You know how we move. Bro, you see John Obi-Mikhail, yeah, he's another player, yeah, that did the simple things that allowed Chelsea to tick. Mm -hmm. You know, when you got the ball from him, very press resistant, mm -hmm. give it to yeah. the best player. Like I think having a player like that in your team is so, so important. Like you said, mm. Makalele was Makalele. brought in. That was just like part of Chelsea's like 
just dominance mm-hmm, of, of, mm-hmm. of that. You know, the two seasons where as soon as Jose took over, having him in midfield was great. Eden Hazard. Hazard. For me, he's my favourite Chelsea player. Yo, Chelsea have had some signings, you Mate, know. Mate, we got yeah. so many yeah. good players. Yeah. Damien yeah. Duff. Ben Duff. Carvalho. Right, Carvalho. Bro, Carvalho. You know, like, when you said you're about thinking of it in like the shrewd signing way, then it was... Yeah, yeah. If it ain't shrewd signings, then Drogba's got to go in mm-hmm. there over, over Aspen Aquetta and a few others. One thing you just said there about I Am Robin, yeah? A few people don't know this. You lot might know this. I Am Robin... And Peter Cech were not bought by Jose Mourinho. They're bought by Ranieri. Ranieri yeah, they, were, yeah. they were bought on yeah, pre agreements yeah. the season before. Seriously? So whether it's the club that done it or Ranieri mm. that done it, but either way. Uh, Ranieri is Kenyan. It's Peter Kenyon. That Peter Kenyon. Yeah. yeah. Bro, he was a. But Ranieri, I can't lie, Ranieri Obviously. is another manager. It makes sense that he won. I think he deserved to win the Premier yeah. League with Leicester just because that Chelsea team were cooking. Mm. Like even though Roman Romic took over and so on, they were cooking. The only reason they didn't win the league the first season was with Ranieri was because we went invincible. Mm. They yeah. finished second. Oh, yeah. show off. All right then. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, we're talking about Champions. Yeah, so that was Joey's. Again, let us know in the comments what you think. And last but not least, Culture Cams. Hey. Take it away, brother. This one is so hard, yeah. I actually still don't don't really know. But the reason why I'm going to go for this one is because I saw the impact of it. It's been tough. I was thinking about Yapstam. I was thinking about P.S. Schmeichel. There's Rios and stuff. But I've got to go with Van der Sar. I'm going to go with Edwin van der Sar because I saw the impact of how bad our goalkeepers were from Schmeichel to van der Sar. We went through Taibi, went through Roy Carroll, Bosnick, um, Tim Howard. Mm. And these guys were not only, or Bartes, mm. these guys were not only genuinely poor keepers, but they have massive high profile mistakes. You think mm. about some of the Champions Leagues, when, I remember when Porto knocked us out. Mm. You think about AC Milan game, Roy Carroll getting lobbed by the Crespo header. You got done think about halfway line, do you yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think, yeah. 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 No, no, the one by um, um, Pedro Mendes. That's it, it, yeah, Pedro yeah, Mendes. Yeah, yeah. Even Thiago, I think Thiago for Chelsea once scored a goal past him. Yeah. Some easy yeah. ones. You, um, Bartes, that game against Arsenal, yeah, mm. where he just ran out of the... two goals. Yeah, the Henri two goals. his head. Yes, bro. <laughs> we're just getting violated. Yeah, you know, so, I thought that he told Henri, I got you. Bro, that's the way he sabotaged us. They made so many high profile ones and Van der Sar came into this club, um, I think it was around 2005, and he was just the, the calming figure that this team needed. Catches corners, he his distribution was very good in terms of like throwing the ball. He was just that keeper, shot stop, shot stopping, and we got him for such a cheap from Fulham. I think it was two, three million from Fulham. Mm-hmm. It was just a top, top signing. And when you go and see what he went on to be a legend of the club, a Champions League winner, saving penalties and already won finals. already in Ajax. Already. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He was just the guy, man. I I I, I love Van der and the partnership that he formed with Rio and Vidic. You know what I mean? I remember, I think we still have it, the longest um, clean sheet run in the Premier League in 2009. So Van der Sar for me is just a, a, a legend and he saved us in terms of f- trying to find a keeper. So that's my number five. Number four, all right, yeah, listen, we have some options here, yeah, but number four, I got to go with Wayne Rooney. Now, it might sound crazy because he's the record goal scorer, signed at 18, but in a little bit in the fashion that um, Joey's talking about, we, he signed for 30 million anyway. That, at that mm-hmm. time, we, I was big money yeah, for a teenager. Money. He was mm-hmm. the most expensive teenager in the world, I think up until Luke Shaw, maybe. I think it might have been Luke Shaw that ended up breaking that. I, I can't remember, but he was a very, very, very expensive teenager, but he came into the club and, you know, we're talking about mentality of my United players now. Mm-hmm. Rooney walked in there like it's just my United mm-hmm. like 17 goals I think it is in his first season mm-hmm. the guy's a boss bro mm-hmm. a young boss he didn't care like the mental- he knew I should be playing for my United already mm-hmm. like he, he was talking about what he did against Arsenal from such a young age just come off the Euros the guy was the that is a wonder kid you know what I mean that's a star boy so we're going on to be our all-time greatest scorer sticking with us through the Okay, he tried to leave twice. But Still Chelsea. Yeah, he tried to leave. <laughs> but he did stick yeah. with us in the end, you know, through the David Moyes era, mm. through end up being our captain through LVG. So he was there from the in the trenches with us. Mm. And I think it just deserved to be our all time scorer. And yeah, man, Rooney's just a, a a special, special player. You know how he's one of the defining you, players of the Prem. Hmm? You now football gives you their memories, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like literally moments in your life you'll never forget. Yeah. And it's always really with your own club, it gives you it. I can just remember sitting in my lounge the old big TV and that I'm watching the match against Fenerbahce when Rooney Rooney, Rooney, Rooney makes his debut with a ripped um, 
Jersey yeah. was too big. It's <laughs> mad, man. Like I'll remember that for the rest of my life. Same. Seeing that and thinking, same. Oh, he's gonna do it here, yeah. isn't he? And and you know what? Sometimes you get players come in. Anthony, for example, recently mm-hmm. comes in, scores in his debut, mm-hmm. and then just goes quiet. Mm. Rooney just kept that level yeah. of consistency. He was so, bro. He's so like how you're talking about Burkamp in terms of everyone played their best alongside Rooney. Yeah. You know what I mean? Van Persie alongside Rooney. Berbatov alongside Rooney. Ronaldo, Tevez, you can, Sahar, you can name so Rude Van Nistelrooy. Wayne Rooney just got the best out of everybody. It was the ultimate teammate, man. Like I see him, like Burkamp, Di Maria's, they're just like ultimate teammates. You How know, he mean? handled they, the Ronaldo thing as well. Yeah, like he bro, Ronaldo so yeah, easily yeah, come yeah, back, yeah. kicked up a fuss yeah. with that. But he knew, nah, I'm going to think in the best interest of the team, yeah. put it behind me, and then them two are on fire yeah, going yeah, forward. Yeah. And I remember when Ronaldo left, you know, and then Rooney just put the team on his back, bro. Literally, he just bro. put the team on his back and we tried to compete. Well, lost on the final day to Chelsea um, for the title, basically, when you guys beat Wigan. But Don't yeah, you so that, I got, that uh, season, him in Valencia. Bro, they might mm. the maddest one two punch yeah, in the league yeah. for some reason. Like, Crazy. it was it was unreal. So I got, got Rooney four, which is still tough, but I got three. Oh, this one is the tough one, yeah. I got Roy Keane as number three. Mm-hmm. Now, I can imagine so many people, especially the older generation, five obviously have a lot of Man United fans. They probably have him, they could have him as number one if they wanted. Mm-hmm. But Roy Keane, the greatest captain we've ever had. You know, we've had great captains, um, um, Brian Robson, who probably most comparable to Roy Keane in, in the way that he ran things on the pitch. But, you know, we've had Rios, you've had Gary Nevilles, you've had Vidiches, but even they would say they ain't comparable to to Roy Keane as a captain. He is the figurehead of this club and he picked up where Cantona left off, you know? Like, that signing from Nottingham Forest, I think they went down. Nottingham Forest went down. Ferguson saw something in Roy Keane, you know what I mean? And then he ended up becoming the manager on the pitch. I don't think we've ever seen a captain like Roy Keane in terms of he was the manager. He was basically the manager on the pitch. Like, Mm -hmm. Ferguson didn't have to do much when you have a Roy Keane. He took responsibility of everything. The young players, the seniors, he was feared. And not only that he's such an underrated player you mm-hmm. know what I mean such a there was games where he dominated Patrick Vieira let's not yeah, no, on the fair, ball fair, he yeah. dominated him you know what I mean Vieira obviously got his own as well but people talk like you know you go on on on, on YouTube and you see football's hardest men and it's Roy Keane and <laughs> he's bald and he's shouting and he's injuring Haaland and so people seem to think he was just this hatchet man like he's Lee Catamore or something the guy was an excellent player mm-hmm. passing through the lines he's one of the best Wayne Rooney said he's the best passer he's played with and he played with Paul Scholes firing it through the lines he can get it to your striker easily he was just a special special player and you think about that Juventus night Mm. as well in terms of moments you know you're not playing in the Champions yeah. League final. Yeah, you yeah. step up like that and you drag Man United there. And even so when it was time well. to lift that Champions League, he didn't even want to lift it. Mm. But they said, come on, you know what I mean? Come on, you're the one that's going to be part of this. Because And he felt he, he felt embarrassed to even meet it. He still says to this day that he didn't win the Champions League, but mm. he's just being modest, I guess. But listen, Roy Keane, he's a catalyst, one of the catalysts for why we're this legendary football club, yeah. man. Honestly, I think... Maybe John Terry surpassed his record, but it was most wins as a captain in the Premier League. I think John Terry surpassed it now, but... If there's one player I I could take from United of all time, it would be Keane. And that might might sound mad because you have Ronaldo and this player, Rooney, and all the quality that United... But Mm -hmm. when you look at leaders, Keane is the best captain in Premier League history. Mm -hmm. Closely followed by Adams, in my opinion, Mm -hmm. but you don't get many of these types of captains, leaders, especially in Mm -hmm. modern day football anymore. Yeah, no, nah, it's it's the fact. I don't think we ever will. I don't think we ever nah, will. That's have a dying breed, man. Yeah, like, we never will. mention John, like John Terry. John Terry is yeah. like, like for me. The reason why I say they're so incredible is because even when they're not playing, they have an influence yeah. on the team. I mm-hmm. remember when John Terry wasn't playing for like a whole season. He was still in a change room, still coming, sitting on the bench. Yeah, and and because young players look up to that player and see that, yeah. that they are coming week in week out and they're delivering mm-hmm. that's why Roy Keane is another one that like will never ever mm-hmm. be not spoken highly even with his fallout with Fergie mm-hmm. yeah. the respect that the club still has for him is, is yeah. like, Fergie, yeah, Fergie, had to, anymore. Fergie had to let go of him because his power in the club became too much but that, just, just he, quickly, he, the power in the I club saw a clip yeah on uh, YouTube yeah mm-hmm. it was basically um, you know like when they're on pre-season mm-hmm. yeah, they're all playing cards yeah and um, one of the senior staff has basically given the, the 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 point to Fergie, and he's gone mad. He's gone, you're up his ass, aren't you? Mm. <laughs> you're no, no, you're up his ass, isn't it? <laughs> no, everyone's gone quiet, mm. yeah. And even Fergie's just like. Mm. Right. <laughs> he just knows this is the boss. Yeah, yeah. Oh, bro, it was a, it was a great. It, like you said, he was a gaffer without yeah. being a gaffer. Literally, um, number two. 
is Cristiano Ronaldo for me. Um, coming in from Sporting Lisbon, like the way he came in, obviously there was a lot of hype around it because of the preseason story and stuff. But then he came in that debut, by the way, nobody's... Wayne Rooney, okay, Wayne Rooney's debut was amazing, but the way he just electrified the fans for about mm-hmm. 30 minutes or whatever, that debut, ripping Bolton apart, wins a penalty, mm-hmm. the step over. The, yeah, you knew we're getting someone so exciting. Mm-hmm. And to see what he's gone on to be- become from that day to what he is now, it's incredible mm-hmm. Like how this has even happened. But the noodle hair, the buck teeth, Ronaldo was just, there was just, he was so iconic. Do you know what I mean? Immediately, as soon as he came to the Premier League, the white boots with the white tape and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then to go on to become what he was like after that moment um, that Joey was talking about with the um, wink gate or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he came back and said, you know what? Everybody in this country hates me. All right. I'm just going to win the player. All right. I'm going to win the league by the way as well. He was just something else that season. I couldn't believe like, I don't know what he was doing in, in, in the summer, but he came back fitter. He looked like he came back taller, by the way. Mm-hmm. He was just, uh, uh, became an athlete, a proper monster. And he ensured our most successful period ever. He was the guy. Mm-hmm. He was the best player. Still, nobody has won a Ballon d'Or in the Premier League since him. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Owen has won. But he is, since then, still Cristiano Ronaldo. I don't think, we talk about Henri as the GOAT, mm-hmm. but I don't think anybody has had a higher peak than Cristiano Ronaldo in this league. Mm-hmm. That's 2007. Seven, eight season is the best season in my opinion we'll ever see no no maybe not ever see but mm. it's the best season we have ever seen in the prem and then we go and do a three p the next season he's injured next season he's injured and he's still only one goal off nicolas Sanelka for the golden boot like mm. ronaldo was the standard bearer the x factor everything about him man and the, as i always say my favorite player of all time because he gave me my greatest ever memories do you know what i mean like Ronaldo in the sc- in school days, Cristiano. Mm. Do you know how good it was to flex having Cristiano Ronaldo? Bro, I was just, you know, I swear my life, I had to fight back tears just because <laughs> I remember like when Ronaldo played. Yeah, I just felt like we had an alien on our pitch. Mm-hmm. I felt like we were superior to everyone. As long as he's playing, sometimes somehow we're gonna go and score. And yeah. I think that season where he scored forty two goals mm-hmm. in, in, all, in all comps. Yeah, I think that epitified what he was as a player. Yeah, yeah. He was clear of everyone. Mm-hmm. Like, and I think that we speak about the rivalry between him and Messi, I think that's when it's begun. It began mm-hmm. that at that yeah. time because then we started to see, oh, these lot are just far away yeah. from everyone else mm-hmm. and everyone Gone. else. And and an indication of that for me um, was when Henri went to Barcelona, he wasn't the best player in the pitch. Mm. It was Messi. Mm-hmm. And I felt yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. looked at Henri like, wow, you mm-hmm. are the goal of all goals. And then, them to have gone on to yeah. just win 13 Ballon d'Or between yeah. them two so yeah you know when he come back is, and scored that goal against Newcastle I almost it's the cried. only time I can remember mm. cheering a different team than mm-hmm. Chelsea as yeah. if it was Chelsea yeah. Yeah. I was around my mate's house jumped up I was cheering we yeah, were like yeah. and it's like I'm cheering Man United Do you know what that yeah. makes me reminds me of when um, Henri came back for Leeds. Leeds. Oh, Leeds. Oh, yeah. Leeds I celebrated that goal oh. Oh. I've got, got goosebumps, bro. And yeah. that's the beauty of the game, bro. Even if you are a bro, hater of a, that was of a team, oh, Henri, yeah. and then he scored that's again. That's my favorite Sunderland. moment of the Emirates era. That yeah. moment. I, I yeah, don't yeah, even yeah. remember. You know, you can see in his eyes, he wanted to cry. He wanted to cry. It was incredible, man. Yeah. That was, yeah. those I cried but enough. Cam, that was your final player. And I think everyone should know who my final player is. Top Reds, all you Rio lovers in the comments, all you older heads, the 50 year olds, the 60 year old, whoever. It's got to be Eric Cantona, man. Yep. Eric Cantona is the most important player of the modern era for Manchester United. He is the the start of this. You know what I mean? Everything you know from Manchester United, I would say is because of Eric Cantona. Obviously, Alex Ferguson and stuff, but Eric Cantona on the pitch. Ferguson needed, yeah, Ferguson needed that leader. He needed that figurehead. Yes, we had Steve Bruce and these guys, but he needed somebody. Yeah. There was something that he needed to add that class to it as well. And Cantona, I think the season just before, won the league with Leeds, bringing in and Eric Cantona. And he was like, if you hear how Gary Neville and these guys, the class of 92, speak about him, he was like their dad. Mm. You know what I mean? He was like the example for them. Ryan Giggs coming into the team. He, he'll put his arm around these guys and guide them. And not only that, what he done on the pitch as well, that as, as Turkish said, the aura, the iconic goals in the FA Cup final, the, the dink and obviously the iconic celebration, mm. everything that Cantona just oozed was class mm. you know and he's such an important sign for us ferguson will always say he's his most important signing one of only four mm. players that he claims are world class that he's managed he was just he was just special and like 
obviously I didn't get to live through his prime or anything like that. Mm. But when you just look back at the impact, everyone has to study their club. Everyone I'm mm. sure studies their club. And you just look at what he done for us, how he transformed us. I just think, imagine if it wasn't Cantona. Imagine if we had signed, I, I don't even know who was, who, the, who the big dogs them days were, but imagine if we had signed someone else. Like, mm everything we know about this club will be different, you know? Mm. And just that, just that fact that he was that foreign kind of class as well. You know, we're very, we were very British club yeah, and yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. And he just came with a little bit of that foreignness to it. Yeah. It was source, just different. Source, like literally. the fact that he can, uh, <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but the fact that he can assault a man <laughs> and Ferguson stands yeah. by you and still yeah. brings you back in and you still continue to win, win titles. Yeah. That just shows that like Ferguson will, if you're a real one, if you're mm. a boss, He'll stick by you, bro. So, wow, man. Honestly, Eric Cantona, our greatest ever signing. The catalyst of this football club, man. 100, 110%. Our best number number seven? Woo! That you've seen. Woo! Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll save that one for another Ooh. episode. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a show Ooh. still. That's another like, show. Yeah. Our best Ooh. number seven. Yeah, yeah, Ooh. All right, guys. Well, this has been a great episode of Five Debates. I've been Harry Pinero, Culture Cams, Joey Knight, and of course, Turkish is in the building. Let us know again if you agree with um, Culture Cams' you know, top five. <laughs> and please let us know in the man. comments, man. Your comments help us with our discussions going into the next topic that will be there Vidic. next week. Yeah, the honorable mentions to Vidic, Vidic, Rio. Andy Cole. Oh, Dwight Van York. Percy. York, <laughs> Van Persie. Van Persie. Percy. Do you give Fergie that last title? On Fergie would have gone out yeah. without a league title. David Belly on. Jemba Jemba. You know what I'm trying to say. But anyway, guys, I've been Harry Potter, like I said, like, comment, and subscribe, and click that notification bell so you're notified when five upload. See you guys next week.